Yesterday, Max is uh, going over to the Kentucky Derby. Keith will join us in just one sec. Jimmy, good to have you around again. I mean, you've, you had a woeful old autumn, didn't you? What have you been doing with yourself? Well, I've been up the Hawkesbury River fishing with the girls, Bruce and Helen, and uh, oh, it's been very relaxing, but disappointing not to be around for the carnival. Keith, I bet you would love to have jumped on Might and Power yesterday. You'd love to give Brian York a bit of a shove, wouldn't you? <laughs> I, I think bet he would. Good. Keith would have been one on him. <laughs> I think so. Look, how would you like to own a filly like Champagne? She's won a million dollars, the first New Zealand, uh, New Zealand filly to do that. Or a horse like Catlin Opening, he's maybe the best miler in Australia. Or Juggler, who's won two million dollars. And Might and Power made them look like collectively radish, didn't he? Yesterday? Yeah, they're not radish, are they? They're they are, not. They are far from radish. Absolutely. What, what did you think of his win yesterday? Well, he obviously made it a chase, not a race, Bruce. He's uh, he, he's world class, he proved that uh, in Melbourne, he's proved it again in Sydney and uh, I, I think wherever he goes he's always going to be the horse to beat. I just, Keith, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at the top state winners uh, in Australasian history. He's moved into the top eight after top yesterday. Eight. And uh, Doremus still going and Saintly hopefully will come back but he's the one I reckon that might get to octagonal. I think well, he can, he... Bruce. Sorry, if Keith. he goes to Japan, Jimmy, and adds that stake to his money, he goes straight to the top of the class, doesn't he? Well, it's certainly not beyond him, uh, Keith. If, if, if he gets to Japan, uh, boy, look out. Can you get Yorkie off? I mean, Yorkie's doing a very good uh, promo job with Jack, too, at the moment. He's uh, done the right thing. Oh, he's a good talker, but he's a good jockey, too, Bruce. Yeah, he he's, is, uh, he is. You know, he, he was probably unlucky not to be on him through the Melbourne, uh, the Caulfield Cup, Melbourne Cup, mm. but that's racing, uh, highs and lows, and uh, at the moment, I've, I've missed out in Sydney, and uh, good luck to Brian. Jimmy and Bruce uh, took after the race at the margin, the official margin of ten and a half lengths was the greatest uh, since at that level since Vane in the Craven A uh, back in the early 60s. Gee, that's a good comparison when he just blitzed them at Group 1. Let's go and have a look at the race. He runs them off their legs and they are good horses. He does make them look, as Keith said, like radish. 600 metres mark, might and power, two and a half to juggler. Champagne is still there. Catlin opening, getting to fourth as they near the turn. And then Dana Mora into gazes under heavy pressure at the tail of the field. Might and power leads for home. Might and power is about six off the fence, led by four lengths to Champagne, getting to second. Juggler's gone. Catlin opening running on gamely, but might and power is a mile in front coming to the 200. He's put five lengths on Champagne. He's breaking their hearts in third place. Catlin opening, juggler really struggling, but ladies and gentlemen, here he is, the new star of the Australian turf, might and power, making them look like second raters, down to the line, nine lengths, I'd say. Champagne second, Catlin opening third. Good call by John Tapp. How good is he, Jim? I think he's the best horse I've seen in Australia since Kingston Town, to be honest, Bruce, I believe that. Gee, that's a wrap, because we've had better loosen up and, you know, very rogue saintlies and octagonals and all of that. I mean, he just careered away from them. When did you feel as if this was going to be a special horse? I actually won a couple uh, midweeks on him at Canterbury and uh, I just thought he, he had that, that so much of a will to win. Uh, he was beat a couple of times in midweek races, but he fought back and was able to win and uh, I thought he was Caulfield Cup material in and, uh, you know, the rest has been history. And yeah, God. Keith, you've seen a few. You've seen a few more than Jim and me uh, over the years in Australia. Are you putting him in, you know, putting him up in the top bracket? Oh, you'd have to. I mean, uh, Max gave a very good description of a champion. It's a loosely used uh, word, isn't it, Bruce? That a champion is a great horse who races against great horses and thrashes them. Yeah. And uh, that was might and power yesterday. He's just, uh, he's a phenomenal horse. I think he's going to be as good as we've seen. I believe he's off to Brisbane, so he's not been kept in cotton wool, no, Jim. Which is great, isn't it, Jim? No, it's good. Uh, I think Brisbane deserved to see him. Uh, Melbourne's seen him, Sydney's yeah. got him, and, uh, and now he can go to Brisbane. Doombin Cup looks uh, good race, race him, for him. It? It certainly looks at his mercy. Wait for age, half a million dollars, and maybe the Hollandale Cup on the way through. Let's go to the Champagne Stakes, the other group one. Probably the surprising thing out of all of this, John Hawkes has had a super season with Larry Cassidy. This was their first group one for the 1997-98 season. Watch for Dracula. And then a glacier in the white blinkers, followed by Mosman. Dracula moving up on the outside of his stablemate arena as they turn for home, where Look for Mars is well clear. Led by two lengths on Trusted Happy, and you know it is under pressure, but running on gamely with Mosman. And Dracula winding up. Here he comes. Dracula down the outside with the last swoop at the 200. And Happy, and you know it is just the leader from Dracula. Mosman between them, not getting a lot of room. Happy, and you know it. And Dracula, Mosman's a half length away. Happy, and you know it. Dracula on the outside. The Colt and the filly, it's a head bobber. Dracula, Dracula wins the champagne stakes about a short head on the line to Happy and you know it. The little filly ran a mighty race.
She did. What a name. That's the um, English uh, style. They have these long names, don't they? And you, yep. you, you, you say them phonetically. Your brother rode well there. I thought it was the ride that won the race, Bruce. He, he sat back quiet, had the last uh, run at them, and uh, good effort to win. Good ride. Not sure if they're the absolute best, Keith. They may be as three-year-olds, a couple of those, like Arena and Dracula, but mm. I think the best ones went round on the slipper. I think uh, Dracula is an, is an improving type, Bruce. Incidentally, uh, talking about names, there was one in America whose name was run together, and uh, his name was uh, Here He Comes With His Eye Hanging Out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty hard for the callers. I heard Craigie yesterday saying, oh, God, happy and you know happy it, a you close know finish. It. She's good. In fact, the New Zealand form has been super uh, this whole autumn. Let's, we'll talk over General Nadine. This turned out to be a bit of a flop in terms of a match race because our man Sewell was so disappointing. But he's a wonderful horse. Uh, Yorkie stayed here to ride Might and Power, not the General. This was a great day for Queensland racing, the, the Carlton Cup. Gee's a wonderful horse, isn't he, Jim? He the is general. a great sprinter, the general, and uh, good, good ride here, Cooksley, too. Like, Cook, he's, he's a great jockey. He can jump off any horse and get on another one, and uh, he, he rides him well, and uh, he, he just... It was good for Brisbane to see him kick back and, and put a gap in him yesterday. And Malagua getting home. Well, Keith, he's just one of those horses that's larger than life. I think it's something about his name. He's got character, hasn't he? Yes, indeed. That was his 12th win. He may race overseas, England, France, uh, and, uh, and definitely in Hong Kong in December. And El Mansour finished last, yeah. and even this morning it's still a mystery. Danny Brereton said he was just on the wrong leg all the way. What did you uh, blokes think of La Baraka yesterday, who won the big sprint in Sydney, the Endeavour? She'd won the Galaxy, and uh, this looked, you know, the General's probably slightly superior in terms of reputation, but right now this filly's probably as good a sprinter as anyone in Australia. You'd have to say that, Bruce. Uh, good ride, Kevin Moses, too. He cuddled her up. Uh, they thought she was probably a bit sus to run the 1200, but uh, oh, Uncle Kevin is best there. It is Uncle Kevin. Hey, in front, Keith, do you remember the day you got excited and rang me on the phone? You'd been to CS's uh, and did the story with C uh, Colin Hayes and, and David and Peter and said, hey, I've got one, Brucey. Yes, it was La Baraka, <laughs> but sadly, uh, like a fairy tale, it didn't have a happy ending. Now, tell but, us, here, what price was she and did you back her? Oh, look, forget that, Bruce. <laughs> Yesterday, La Baraka won her sixth race. <laughs> I couldn't help it, Keith. <laughs> Thanks a lot. She was 16 to 1. Son, they had something on it. Yes, I know. And uh, they said the r inside the rail was off that day. S only stopped the winning by ten, didn't it? That was her sixth win yesterday. She was she only cost forty grand. That was because she has terrible knees, and uh, and now she's probably worth half a million. Hey, we've got to go. Your legs aren't too good either, but you'd, you'd fetch more than the your legs. Jimmy, good to see you. Thank and, you. And you come back.